So all of the steering components that I replaced under here. Wow, it's cold this morning and my hood struts don't want to hold the hood up. <laughs> so, all right then, so I'm gonna have to go find a homemade prop rod for the hood. But anyway, all of the steering components that I replaced, you know, I did the tie rod ends, new drag link, all of that. That did not cure the symptom that I was having, which is that popping, looseness. Um, I don't even know how to describe it, like a clunk that I can feel in the steering wheel. That didn't go away. So this stuff did need to be replaced. I mean, that ball joint that goes into the pitman arm had noticeable movement. These joints were all worn out, or at least that one was definitely worn out. The other ones had a lot of miles on them. So I did need to go ahead and replace that stuff, but that was not the, uh, the, the cause of that sensation that I'm getting in the steering wheel. So today I'm gonna go to plan B and I've got a new intermediate shaft. So if you look at where the steering wheel goes into the firewall and then comes down toward the steering box there, you'll notice there's a couple of different sections you know, in that column and that's called the intermediate shaft. This is the lower part of the shaft. I'm gonna show you this close up in just a second. Uh, from what I understand, this is an updated part, so I'll show you the number on it and everything. Uh, but this thing has U-joints on both ends, so it has to have free range of motion on both ends. And uh, here, let me just get the camera and show you up close how this thing works, because this, when it gets old and worn and sticky, can definitely be a cause of clunking in your steering wheel. Okay, so you can see how this, uh, this shaft, intermediate shaft here, this section obviously, like I said, you've got U-joints on both ends of this thing, but also you'll notice that it can telescope. And the reason they build these to be able to telescope is because, you know, the frames on these trucks are very rigid, but there is still some movement. You know, and so the relationship between the frame of the truck and the cab of the truck, there's a little bit of flex and movement there, especially if you go off road. So your steering column has to be able to take up that travel. So, you know, this one's a little stiff because it's new, but I can tell that it does have free range of motion and the U joints on both ends feel really good on this new replacement. Let me uh, come in here and see if we can get a part number on this thing. The camera will focus. So, so yeah, we're gonna replace this part. Now bef before I get started here, one thing that I will mention, okay, disclaimer, so pay attention here. Obviously, this is a critically important part of your truck. If you don't install this correctly and this thing comes loose while you're driving down the road, you will have no steering control whatsoever. You could be injured or killed. You could injure or kill someone else. Not good, okay? So if you don't feel comfortable replacing stuff like this, don't do it, <laughs> okay? Just don't do it. Take it to a shop, take it to the dealership, whatever. You gotta make sure that this is done correctly, okay? So I would kind of advise you not to do this, actually. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace this today uh, because I've actually done these before. So you've got a bolt here and you've got a bolt here. And you can see that basically how this works is you slide it onto the shaft and then that bolt clamps it down. You do the same thing on this end up here. You slide it onto the shaft since it can telescope, it's easy to do. And then you put the bolt in and clamp it down. So without further ado, let's get started. So if you're fortunate enough to have a gasoline engine, this is gonna be a whole lot easier because you're gonna have a whole lot more room to work. But if you've got a diesel engine, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> no, it can be done, it's just a whole lot harder. So you'll notice obviously when you pop the hood on a diesel, you can't see anything down in here. But if you look, um, you kind of get your bearings here so you can see where I'm at. We're gonna zoom in and look down in here. If I can keep zooming and the camera is not wanting to cooperate. There it is. 
All right, so there's the intermediate shaft on the lower end. You can see the bolt. You can see the bolt right there. Okay, so that's the lower one you've got to take out. And I guess you could use some really long extensions and get to that one. And then the upper one, you can see fairly easily if you get up here and look straight down, there's that one. So again, some long extensions and you can get to both of them. I've noticed that as you come over here and look through the wheel well, you can actually see the lower one in here. Where'd it go? Well, it's hard to find with a camera, but when you get down here in person and look at your truck, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. There's the intermediate shaft right there. Just take my word for it. It's hard to do with a camera, but you can actually see the lower one fairly easily up inside here. On some trucks, you may have to take some of your inner liner out. Um, I'm assuming most of them are just like this, but if you've got a liner that covers more, you'll have to take the liner out. But uh, but anyway, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and go through here to get to the lower one and then just use some extensions to get the upper one. And we'll see how that goes. One more thing that I did before I get started here is I put a bungee cord on my steering wheel just to make sure that it doesn't go spinning all over the place when I have the, uh, when I have the shaft apart. Do you like my homemade prop rod? <laughs> I guess I'll have to buy some new hood struts i'll have to add that to my rock auto list this afternoon because that's no good right there anyway so i took the wheel off and looked up in there and uh i was gonna go through the wheel well to get to this lower one but i think i'm gonna call an audible here because even though you can see it easier over there unless you take that whole line around and move those brake lines you don't really have a lot of room to get in there and work with your hands. So I'm actually going to attempt to go down through here and get this one the same way that I got the upper one. And it looks like, gosh, I've got all these extensions. Looks like I'm gonna need even more. So what I'm gonna end up having to do, I don't have any more 3 8 drive extensions. So I guess I'm gonna use a series of adapters and try to put together I'm going to cobble something together that's long enough to reach it from here. Um, but there's certainly easy access to it if I can just get enough extensions together. So let me go do that and then I'm going to try and get this lower one undone. I've got so many extensions together now that they won't even stay on the ratchet. So you kind of have to hold all this together. And if it keeps falling apart on you, what you can do is take some electrical tape or something and just wrap your joints and that'll hold all this stuff together but I'm going to attempt this and see what happens man the joys of having the diesel engine right this is one of those things that would be a lot easier if you had more room to work in here but I got it so like I said this is going to be the easiest way to access it not out of the woods yet though there's a long way to go here now this lower one is 10 millimeters and the upper one is 13 millimeters and the thing that i'm finding strange about this is that the 10 millimeter one down here is, is putting up more of a fight than the upper one did but it is definitely loose at this point because I can see the shaft wiggling. So now hopefully I can use my hands and get in here through the wheel well. And uh, as the breeze picks up here, hopefully my prop rod won't collapse on me. I probably ought to check this. Seems pretty good for now. I'll tell you what though, I'm gonna move this Move it right here like that. Now it's kind of sitting down in a pocket. That makes me feel a little better. Last thing you want to do is get your head clamped. 
So now that I got it loose, I should be able to reach my hand in here and slide it off the shaft. All right, so I took the, uh, the old one out and I noticed that this upper U joint on this thing feels pretty good, but the lower one has noticeable roughness in it. You know, like when I move it back and forth, you can feel it almost, there's probably like little needle bearings or something in here. And obviously there's no way to lube it up. It's just a non-serviceable item. So it feels like those have worn out and it's very rough. Um, the telescoping part seems fine. So I'm guessing it was this lower joint that went bad. So anyhow, now I can get the new one and put it in. Now the trick to this is to take the bolts all the way out. I thought that maybe you could just loosen the bolt up and slide this off the shaft, but it doesn't work that way. The bolt, when the bolt is in there, it actually kind of retains this onto the shaft. So you got to completely remove the bolt to free it up. Once I did that, it was pretty easy. So get in here now and slide this thing on here. I actually found that I can go through the wheel well to remove the old one. I can go through there and slide this new one on. And I can even get the bolts started by hand through the wheel well, uh, but then we're gonna go through the roof up here, or excuse me, under the hood uh, to uh, tighten them up. So that's basically how this is gonna work. Once you get that all figured out, it's not too bad of a job. All right, headed down the road. Gonna give it a little bit of a road test here. Obviously we're leaving out on a gravel road, so this thing is pretty rough and it'll tell me real quick if this thing is cured or not. And I will say already that uh, it feels better already. But let me give it just a moment or two here to make sure because sometimes that popping sensation, you know, at times it wouldn't be as bad and then at other times it would. It's kind of weird, but I definitely am not feeling it so far. You know, I mean, if you... Uh, I've had some guys say that they feel it in the accelerator pedal. I've never felt it in the accelerator pedal. My sensation's always been in the steering wheel. Like I said, it's hard to describe, but it's just kind of like a clunk or a looseness, or it just, it just doesn't feel tight, you know? It's kind of hard to describe, and it would just happen from time to time. On rough roads, it was worse. If you're going over dips, it was worse, which makes sense because that's when you're kind of flexing things and you're working those little U-joints I was showing you on that intermediate shaft. So I guess that makes sense. But you know, I'm going down this rough road right here. I don't feel anything now. I think that honestly might have been the cure because I don't feel it at all. And it usually was pretty bad on this part of the road. Um, you know, like I said, it's just, if you're on a perfectly smooth highway, you might not notice it so much, but it was pretty disconcerting on these rougher roads. So let me get down here to the pavement and uh, we'll just make sure everything is good to go. Hey, there goes a turkey. Did you see that? Look at all the turkeys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one went over the hill, so eight turkeys that's why the bourbon distillery here locally is called wild turkey because there's all kinds of turkeys around here okay here we go down the paved part of the road and it's it's kind of bumpy too but man i'll tell you i am really not feeling that sensation at all that's awesome so I think that definitely cured it. Right here, it's kind of off camber and rough. Oh yeah, it's as tight as a banjo string now. I don't feel anything through the steering wheel now. It's perfect, awesome. So I think I ordered that part from Tasca Parts Online. I think it was somewhere in the ballpark of $125, maybe a little more. So, 
you know i did it myself in less than 30 minutes uh, definitely something you, like i said earlier in the video if you're not comfortable doing it don't do it because it's definitely not something you want to screw around with your steering is critically important but if you're mechanically inclined and you want to take on the risk i mean you can do it at home in less than a half hour and save yourself gobs of money because there's no telling what the dealership would charge to do do something like that uh, but anyway you got the part number from the video and a little bit of a how-to so if you've got that clunk that looseness in your f-250 or f-350 steering wheel that's what you need apparently is that lower section of the intermediate steering shaft that seems to be the cure so awesome seems like there was another point i was going to make but i've kind of forgotten it so and eh, pretty straightforward not a whole lot more to say about it i'm just glad that that's cured i mean it's completely tight now and feels great hard to believe that that little bitty joint down there the roughness in that little bitty joint made all that you know stuff happen in the steering wheel but i guess it did so all right another fix done so we can head on down the road we'll talk to you guys later